Welcome back, folks. This is Steve, KM9G, and I've been playing around. You've seen some updates over on Twitter if you're following me there. If not, there is a link in the description down below for my Twitter feed. Um, Linux running on this natively. It's kind of an interesting thing. This is an ARM-based processor. ARM-based processors have been running Linux for a while. Let's try booting it up with just a plain old version of Linux. You can see on the screen over here that I am in a serial console and I am ready to log in. Let's try the login. And I spelled my username wrong, so let's start over again with that. All right, so we are logged in. This is just your typical radio. I am going to take an SD card and I'm going to put it in, but I'm not going to, to put it all the way in. I'm just gonna kind of stage it to be ready. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the radio off and we'll see it pop off in the serial console. And it is ready to roll. And then we'll come over to my notepad where I keep all my notes of what I need to do. And I'm going to copy this. There will be information on this in the description down below. Um, but what we need to do now is continue to keep this serial console up and running and boot it up again. And when it boots up, start pressing control C when you see the, the boot up screen, then you start seeing this interrupt. You've now interrupted the boot process. And I'm going to paste in the command line, the boot arguments for booting this thing off of the SD card. And I'm going to put the SD card into the machine. Set env boot args root dev mmc blk 0 p1. mmc blk 0 is the external SD card um, slot. And then p1 is partition one off of that. fbcon equals rotate colon three. You can boot without that, but it'll run sideways down the radio instead of normal down the radio like we want and then root wait so that it waits for the root partition to be there in case you didn't put the card in all the way it'll wait forever until the card shows up so we press enter on that and then we need to load a couple of pieces of custom firmware this first one is fat load because it's coming off of a fat file system table it's not being you know critical of of the sd card size uh, fat load MMC one colon one zero X four six zero followed by five zeros. That's the address to load the Z image into, which is the Linux kernel. We've loaded that in and then we will fat load again, another file. And this is the sun eight I R 16 X 6100 DTB file. This is basically a database of kernel drivers and so on and so forth. I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, what all the contents are, but that's my impression there. And then we will tell it to run those two pieces of code with this command. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this over to the front panel of the radio real quick so you can watch the boot. So hang on there. All right, now we're on the front panel of the radio and you can still kind of see the serial console going on. And we are going to click over there and we're going to boot it up. And a link to the Armbian image that I'm using will be also in the description down below. All right, we are at a login. And I'm logging in over the serial console, but this could just as easily be done with a keyboard and mouse plugged directly into the radio on the USB-C host port. And there we go. And the first thing it's gonna want me to do is change the default password, which is one, two, three, four, over to something a little bit more involved. And I'm gonna do something more involved. And there we go. It's gonna want my personal username. And you can see that it's kind of interspacing um, you know, console output for me with console output of debugging messages. Like these here are debugging messages right up here and it's asking me, please provide a username, e.g. your forename. So what I will do is I will finish answering the question it asked me and ignore the debugging output. And then enter my new Unix password. Confirm it. It has been confirmed. I'm just going to leave these values as blanks. 
And what this is doing is it's configuring the SD card to be my default Linux working environment. Yes, the information is correct, having not provided any. It just turned itself off, but it didn't actually turn itself back on. So when I run that, it should let me connect to the serial port. And it's complaining because I left my SD card in. So I gotta take the SD card out, and I always forget this. Take the SD card out. And power off the radio, power it back on again. Interrupt the boot cycle, put the SD card in, and then we'll put our boot parameters back on. All right, and now it is booting up again. So this is the after configuration boot. All right, and we're at a login prompt. So what I'm gonna do is move my personal keyboard out of the way, and I'm going to plug in this keyboard here. So I've got a USB-C hub, plug that in, and that gives me my keyboard on the radio screen. So you'll see the, let me, let me make the radio, let me embiggen the radio. Not gonna get much better, but at least you'll be able to see a little bit of it. And I'm gonna type in my username, and my password. And there we go. We've now booted into Linux directly on the radio. What does this really mean for all of us? This means awesome possibilities. I just wanted to show you that it's done, give you the instructions on how to do it. And then because Zygu has released the latest firmware update a couple of days ago, um, that would be the process to restore this thing or restart this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this thing down. I need to pull the SD card out and then power it back on again. And now it's booting off of the internal MMC chip. And we're back at our normal radio operations. Excellent. There is a video right over there that I think you will enjoy. Thanks for being awesome.